Hello beautiful people, welcome back to my channel. In this video, I'm gonna be sharing with you guys all the books that you'll be needing during your first year of medical school. I think it's really important that you get familiar with your book list before you start medical school, so that way when classes start, you can pretty much start studying right away. And the reason why I say that is because you can actually spend weeks fumbling trying to figure out which books are the best books to get for which courses and where to get them. Your first semester is only about 15 weeks long, so imagine if you spend four weeks trying to figure out which books to get and by the time they get delivered to you, you have wasted so much time and you're already behind in your classes. So I think the best thing to do is know your book list from now, start ordering them, and you can start studying as soon as classes start. If you are new to my channel, Channel. welcome thank you so much for clicking on this video I really appreciate it my name is Adun Aluren and I'm a fourth year medical student studying at the University of the West Indies we are on the way to 1,000 subscribers here on this channel so hopefully I can convince you to stick around and become a part of my small but growing family here on YouTube and I really appreciate all of you for helping me get there but without further ado let's get started Before we get started, I just want to say that all the books that I mentioned throughout this video are going to be linked down in the description box and I'm actually linking the newest versions to each of those books because I know people like new editions, child. But if you are interested in saving some money, please feel free to get the older versions. They will be much cheaper. I actually have owned all the older additions to my textbook so I could save some money throughout medical school and they have worked perfectly fine for me. I never really felt like I was at a deficit so I'm gonna just include the image of what the old edition looks like if you're interested so that way you can have an idea of what you're looking for. So let's get straight into it course per course starting with semester one of your first year. Musculoskeletal system, I think, is the course that every single first year took pretty seriously, so you'd wanna have your books ready to tackle this course. You actually wanna start studying for anatomy right away because there is a lot to memorize and the topics can get ahead of you really quickly. The must-have textbooks for the musculoskeletal system or for anatomy on the whole are your last anatomy textbook, which you pretty much have to know verbatim and you will also be in need of a really good atlas and the gold standard for your anatomy atlas is usually the Netter's Atlas of Human Anatomy. Fundamentals of Disease and Treatment, aka FDT, is actually a multidisciplinary course. So it covers your basic pharmacology, your basic pathology, as well as microbiology. So the books that I use for FDT and that are usually recommended for this course are your Robbins Basic Pathology and your Rang and Dale's Pharmacology. So side note for your Robbins Basic Pathology text, be sure to get the Robbins Basic Pathology as opposed to your Robbins and Cotran's pathologic basis of disease. That is a larger, more complicated text. I actually had that text and I thought it was quite fine, but your professors will most likely recommend your Robbins basic pathology because they think that's more appropriate for us at this level. Cell bio starts in your first semester, but it goes all the way through second semester and you're not tested on it till the end of second semester. So the recommended text for cell bio is actually Lippincott's Illustrated Review Biochemistry, but honestly, for cell bio, my best advice, I think, is to just get it how you live. <laughs> and the reason why I say that is because cell bio is a pretty dense course and it can be pretty complicated if you have never taken a cell bio or biochemistry course prior to coming to medical school. So whatever resources or methods work best for you to learn those cycles, to learn all those pathways, then use that. But just remember that Lippincott's is the recommended text here. 
embryo and histo at my school is particularly tricky and that's because the exam is notorious for not coming like it was taught in class not so much the histo part the histo is fine we have a really really awesome histology teacher at least when i was in my first year but the embryo aspect is tricky because it doesn't come like it's supposed to come you know that type of way but the recommended texts here are your Langman's Medical Embryology and your DeFore's Atlas of Histology. Like cell bio, intro to medical practice, aka IMP, is tested at the end of your first year. So for IMP, which actually has a second part in your second year, the recommended text is McLeod's Clinical Examination. You'll also be needing this book later in your clinical year, so you may as well get it now and hold on to it because you might be needing it forever. Molecular medicine, I would say, is like a genetics course, and the lecturer that teaches this course, her lecture slides are usually sufficient for writing your exam, so there isn't really a recommended text here. But of course, if you want to do your own research online, or maybe pick up a biochemistry book or some genetics textbook to supplement the lecture slides, you can go ahead and do that. So finally, on to semester two of your first year. So hematology and the reticuloendothelial system. This course is basically your first unit of heme because you will see heme again in your third year when you do clinical heme and then you'll see it one more time in fourth year when you do path and micro B. So this is another course whose textbook is going to stick with you forever. The recommended text here is Hofbrand's Essential Hematology and for this particular text you might want to get the most recent an addition because imagine by the time you get to fourth year the addition that you got in first year might be completely outdated and the reason why I say that is because when you get in fourth year the course coordinator for your path and micro B rotation who is the heme professor she actually makes reference to the most recent addition all the time now personally for me I didn't pay that no mind I still use my old edition and I just kind of updated the lab values and little things that changed throughout the editions but y'all know me I'm a little different I'm okay with the old edition but if you want to keep up to date with Dr. Buckner go ahead and get the most recent edition of Essential Heme. Respiratory system is the first system-based course that you will encounter in medical school that will start and finish in your first year. You actually start cardiovascular system in first year, but it doesn't end until your second year. So RESPI is the only system-based course that's gonna start and finish during your first year. Now, the thing is about systems-based courses is that they are multidisciplinary. So you'll actually be needing to know the physiology, the anatomy, the embryo histo, the pathology, the pharmacology, sometimes some medicine, and sometimes some microbiology for that particular system. Phew! <laughs> So some of the books that I mentioned before, you might be using here. So for instance, your Robin's Basic Pathology, your Last, your Netters, your DeFores, your Rangendales, and of course, Lecture Slides. But of note, you will be needing a good physiology textbook. And this goes for most, if not all, of your system-based courses and the usual recommended physiology textbooks are either Guyton and Hall Physiology or Ganong's Review of Medical Physiology. You don't have to get both, choose one. Guyton is the most popular and the one that's most recommended by lecturers, but I used Ganong. So neuroscience at UE is split into two different courses. Neuro 1, which focuses more on the peripheral nervous system, and Neuro 2, which focuses more on the central nervous system and neuroanatomy. For Neuro 1, you won't be needing much else other than this particular lecturer's lecture notes. Her slides are usually extremely detailed and she includes everything that she wants you to know. However, if you want to use a source of reference here, the recommended reference text would be the Guyton and Hall Medical Physiology book that I mentioned 
mentioned earlier and then for Nero 2 the recommended text is bars but don't worry about that yet there is also a pharmacology component of neuroscience and you can use your Rangendales here as well. Healthcare Concepts is a course that has mostly psychiatry and community health concepts so there isn't really a recommended text here and your lecturers will tell you what it is that they want you to know at this level. The reason why I say at this level is because you will see these similar concepts again in third year on your family medicine rotation and all of what you learned in first year will be reinforced there. So for this particular course, your lecture notes and your compiled notes should should serve you just fine. So these are just the recommended textbooks for your courses during your first year of med school. So feel free to use whatever resources that you feel will help you supplement your lectures, whether that be online subscriptions like Najib, Boards and Beyond, Kaplan, or even YouTube videos, or even tutoring courses like Brain and Training, which is held on the UE campus, and now because of COVID, it's online. But if this video was helpful, please give it a big thumbs up. I would really appreciate it. And if you are beyond first year, please comment below some of the books and resources that helped you get through your first year. And please share this video with an incoming first year so they know what to get and what to expect. As always, thank you guys so much for watching this video. I really appreciate it. And if you have made it this far, you might as well go ahead and click that subscribe button and hit that notification bell so you can be notified each and every single time I post a video. Again, thank you guys so much and I hope to see you in my next video. Bye!